joining me on the stage is John Johannes, Game Director at Tango Gameworks, and Trent Haga, one of the writers on the project. Tough E3! Welcome! <laughs> you guys excited to be here? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, a long flight for you. Long flight for me. First time here, actually. So. Oh, the excitement is palpable. I can feel it. Oh, yeah. Palpable in the waves. I'm sure you can all feel it out there as well. Absolutely. Um, before we actually start talking about the game, I know we have a very special message from Shinji Mikami, who unfortunately could not be here because he's obviously back in Japan working on the game. So uh, let's see what Shinji has to say. Hi. I have a note from Bethesda. really excited to finally announce our new game. Uh, the team is hard at work here in Tokyo uh, to bring it to you later this year. Please look forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> That's our boss. That passion. <laughs> Does he ever wear the same hat more than once? <laughs> He's got many hats. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Literally know. and figured yeah, so many hats. Yeah. So many hats. Uh, John, for those who might be unfamiliar or maybe need a refresher, can you just tell us real quick what uh, what is this series? What is The Evil Within? Well, The Evil Within is a survival, here, a survival horror series created by Koshichi Mikami. Um, and just like in the first game, uh, it's, it's you play Sebastian Castellanos, a detective, and who must dive into this sort of uh, subconscious world to take over all these horrors that have uh, various reasons. Um, this game, we don't want to get into too many details yet. But um, yeah, this game uh, is a little bit different than the first one because there's a lot more freedom um, involved in how you play the game. But it still maintains that survival horror uh, aspect that we really set up in the original game as well. Great. We'll definitely be talking a lot more about that in just yes. a minute. John, this is not your first Evil Within game. You no, no. did a lot of work with the first one and, and especially the very well-received DLC. Talk about how your role has evolved. Yeah, so I've been with uh, Tango since they began. Uh, I was the game designer on the first Evil Within, and then on the two um, uh, Kidman uh, DLCs, the Assignment and the Consequence, I uh, wrote and directed those. And now I'm uh, game director on Evil Within 2. So. Awesome. And Trent, congratulations on your film 68 Kill, recently winning the Audience Award at South by Southwest. Thank That's you. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. It comes out in August. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, absolutely go check that out. Yeah, exactly. No, Sorry. Plug, plug it. No plugs. Great. What was it like shifting from writing horror movies to working with Makani san on this game? Uh, it was a super incredible international adventure. You know, when I write a horror movie, I uh, have a captive audience that I only have to keep uh, entertained for an hour and a half. Whereas here, I don't have a captive audience. They have the option to have their character turn around and walk out of a room. Like, if I write, the guy walks into a room, you have to, whereas here you don't. So uh, it's a way bigger world. It's a lot more hours than an hour and a half to be able to do it. And the, the engagement with the, the player is uh, in many ways more intense than the engagement with an audience in a theater. We have to think about the idea that uh, if he goes in and talks to this character and then walks out, but then he decides he wants to come back in, well, what's going to happen then? So it's a, a, a broader canvas to work with, and uh, he's really excited. I personally love the horror genre because it's it's amazing in a way that a lot of other genres aren't. It can mean so many different things to every person. So I guess in the context of evil and then specifically, what is horror to you? What what really catches you with this game? For me it's always about that sort of like sense of mystery that you don't really fully grasp what's going on. Um, the first game maybe went a little bit too far, I think, because it was, it was very mysterious and a lot of mysteries. And um, uh, this game, too, it has that sense of mystery. Um, I think it, the setup the premise is a little bit more easy to grasp to begin, but um, there's when you finally get your hands on it, there's a sort of deep mystery about the world and about these characters, um, and especially about Sebastian, uh, that you'll only 
see as you go further and you know take on some of these enemies and go search through this world that you find. Uh, a lot has happened in the three years between these two games. Uh, in the Evil Within One, Sebastian Castiano was a detective who got trapped in this horrifying world uh, while investigating a series of murders. But now, where is he? Where? What's he been doing these past three years, Trent? Uh, yeah, what's Sebastian been doing? Three years ago, <laughs> he had this beacon incident and tried to tell everybody, listen, I went into an alternate reality. It was crazy, and this was going on. And uh, as soon as he got out, of course, anyone that corroborated his story is either dead or disappears on him. So everyone thinks that Sebastian's a paranoid, crazy guy. He's lost his job. He's uh, been trying to approve of the existence of Mobius, the corporation who put him in the machine the first time. So when we pick up on this game, it's three years later, and uh, he's sort of lost everything. He's lost his family, he's lost his job, and perhaps even lost some of his mind. And uh, now it's time for him to, uh, he gets the opportunity to sort of go back in and figure out uh, uh, what, what put him there. So it is revealed in the beginning that um, uh, Sebastian's daughter, we thought he had lost in a, a fire even before the events of the first game, um, is still alive and is being used by this uh, company Mobius who's built this machine uh, stem and is inside that machine was lost inside there. Um, so as any parent would do in that situation, no matter what the consequences, he's ready to go in and face his efforts out there to get his daughter back. So the story truly that you mentioned, we actually showed part of it during our showcase on Sunday, but now we have the full extended story trailer that we're going to reveal here right now. Sebastian, for three years since Beacon happened, you've been searching for answers, searching for me. You didn't find what you were looking for because they didn't want you to. But I'm here now, and I have the answers you're seeking. Although I'm not sure you want to hear them. Mobius knows you've been following us. You think you have an understanding of how powerful they are. They're everywhere, and they've been watching you for a long time. There never was a rookie detective Julie Kidman. You know that now. I was working for them the whole time. You took me under your wing, trained me, trusted me, and in return, I betrayed you. I'm sorry, but you just don't say no to them. Mobius needs you now, and if you accept our offer, you'll get something in return. This isn't going to be easy, but Long before we met, you lost your daughter, Lily. I know you'll find this hard to believe, but she's still alive. We staged her death. We used her mind to create another STEM system, and now she's trapped inside it. Lily needs you. This is your chance to save her, to get back what you lost. But in order to do that, you're gonna need to go back into STEM. Again. Yes, as an organization has taken on this technology and sort of developed it into a new machine which links people's consciousness together and um, they can share it in this, in this separate reality. And they have their own goals for it, which uh, are which they think are quite good, but um, do not seem to ever serve that purpose of being good. Um, only bad things are coming. Alright. Will he be going back in on his own? Is there any hope of backup once he's in there, or is he just... He he's just out of luck. the last resort that they go to. Um, there have been people, uh, you'll find out when you play the game, there have been people who have been sent in before him, and you may or may not meet these people inside. Um, but Sebastian is sort of the last resort. So why did these other people get sent in to STEM? What's their goal? Are we going to spoil early? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say if you're a, a shadowy organization, you try to keep things internal before you yeah, have to go to the... Uh, you don't want to call <laughs> the washed up uh, detective guy to yeah. save your ass at the end of the thing. You've got to say It's there. not the first number on your phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello? Jack, yeah, are you there? This 
is uh, Stefano. He's one of the um, villains that you face in this game, and she's an artist. Now, why he's in this world and what he's trying to accomplish, I think that's really uh, an interesting mystery that you're going to find out if you explore the game. And then there's one other villain who uh, appeared at the, the, the end of the trailer. Um, We'll just say his name now, which is Theodore. Um, but we'll definitely get into more of these villains as we, uh, as the promotion continues, as we have um, when we display more about them. All right, but perhaps more important thing. What is oh, that? This thing. Yes, actually, it's much cuter on my. It's over so here. cute on the button. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> horrifying up there. Yes, that is um, uh, Obscura, and uh, Stefano has his own set of sort of uh, villains. Uh, you remember the first game of Rubik had his own set of villains. In the same way, um, Obscura is one of Stefano's creatures. Um, and again, don't want to go into too much meaning about what it is, but I will tell you that it um, it will come at you, and it will hurt you, and it will kill you. So <laughs> I mean, does it kill you in a cool way at least? Oh, it will, and uh, you can see its head is, uh, is an old-fashioned camera. Um, it enjoys the act of, uh, of, of displaying its, its art that it creates when it's referred to you apart. Oh, great. Um, which will maybe happen to you when you play the game, yeah? Oh, thank you. Fundamentally, though, what we got, we got the, it's, a, it's a sequel. It's a bigger place. It's got more exploration. It's got more more, more ways to be scared. It's got not one, but you just mentioned the names of two guys, two big bad guys. Uh, the it's idea is to <laughs> amp it up, right? Amp it up. <laughs> Oh, my God. 